Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I'm having way too much fun with that. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Elgato Facecam Pro. Elgato did send me this webcam, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through key tech specs on the side as well as the back. Here's what you need to know. True 4K webcam at up to 60 FPS. We have variable focus, pan, tilt, and zoom effects, built-in Sony sensor, 90 degree field of view. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature with safety instructions and a quick start guide. This guide is very detailed and thorough and it's in multiple languages. Charts, diagrams going over installation instruction, how to connect everything, how to clean and maintain your camera, reset button, favorite apps you can use with it. Then we have our tech specs listed right here for you if you're interested. 21 millimeter focal length, that's a full frame equivalent, 90 degree field of view, Sony sensor, USB 3.0 type C for the connection. It weighs 0.53 pounds if you're wondering. Focus range, 10 centimeters. Next you'll see we have our USB type C cable here, followed by our mount. And then lastly, we have the Facecam Pro right here. We'll rotate it all different sides and angles for you. Mounting options on the bottom, USB Type-C plug on the back. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up. We're gonna use the monitor mount that's included with the camera, but if you wanted to bring your own tripod, if you wanted to use one of Elgato's mounts, even one of their mic mounts, depending on your setup, what you're trying to accomplish with this camera, you can do that very easily right here with our universal threaded adapter. In our case though, tool-free installation to get everything installed. They have the nice little handle that you can prop up right there. And we just take the camera and we twist everything on very gently in place. We wanna make sure it's lined up fairly straight. Then we can have it nice and snug, tuck that out of the way. And then we even have a fine tune adjustment option here. So look at that. We have a tilt adjustment. So when it sits on our monitor, we can adjust it to the right viewing angle. So let's bring our monitor out here and you'll see how we just gently set it on. And you'll line that back portion right here just to rest on the back of your monitor. You can prop it up or down depending on, again, the thickness of your monitor and what you're trying to accomplish. But we could have it just like that, all set and ready to go. If we need to tilt it down a little bit, we can do that as well. Technically, it can, it can tilt all the way down here, but you'd have to put some sort of counterweight on the back, at least with this particular monitor, to keep it in position. But they do give you a ton of flexibility there depending on your setup and what you're trying to accomplish. And then don't forget on the back side right here, we have our USB type C cable. So just plug one end into the camera and then we'll set the camera back on the monitor right here. And then you'll plug the other end into your computer. Also wanted to mention, I don't know the exact length of this cable, but holding it out, it's gonna be about six feet, maybe a little bit shy of six feet for the included USB type C cable and its cable length. All right, we have our Facecam Pro plugged in and ready to go. We have it connected to a Windows 11 PC and you'll notice we have the Camera Hub software downloaded. So we'll be walking through all the settings here. Man, that looks really good just seeing it on my display. That's amazing that that is a webcam, but let's go through some of the settings. First up here from the Camera Hub software, we have three different tabs depending on your device. So in this case, we choose our device right here, the Elgato Facecam Pro. We have our format. We have multiple formats we can pick and choose from. 21 to 60 by 60 frames, 21 60 by 30 frames right there. Then we have our 1080p 60, we have our 1080p 30, we have 720p 60, and 720p 30. So that's not really gonna change anything right there. Let's go back, let's do 2160 30 right now. And that's what our format currently is. And now look, the next section is our framing right here. So by default, 100% is what you have. But we can zoom this all the way up to 400%. Hey, that focus is still really good there at 400%. And then we can bring it anywhere back down. 
Then we have different presets, A, B, C, or D. That's pretty cool. And then from these presets, we could toggle on face tracking if we wanted. Hey, look at that. So it's gonna track our face as long as we stay somewhere in that frame. If I go further out here, it's gonna stop. Now we can go the other way. That's pretty fast and responsive when you're talking about a webcam framing our face. Impressive stuff. We're gonna to toggle that back off and we'll just go back to preset A. Next, we have our focus settings here. So what do you want? Do you wanna set it yourself or do you want it automatic? So if that bothers you or you're moving around a bunch, just keep that in mind. Let's try to go back to our 2160. We'll do 60 this time. But there's our focus options, right? Automatic or do you want to focus it yourself? You can see the range. Pretty neat. So mid, far, or near. Can we get into focus? We gotta get really close. I don't think I can get close enough with my desk for that near focus. Go back to mid, or we can just do automatic there so it can focus in for us. Next, we have our picture settings, so we can adjust the contrast or saturation. And then here's the saturation. Ooh, that's looking a little red. Whoa, where do we go? Or somewhere in the middle, and then we can go back to our defaults right there, 50-50. Then we have our exposure settings. So you can set this automatic if you want. You can adjust, if you'd prefer, shutter speed. And ISO. Oh, that's special. And then we can go back to automatic. If you're wondering how to do that, you want to play around with that a little more, feel free to take the result that they have and then just tweak it slightly a little bit here, a little bit there for the shutter speed or your ISO and adjust it that way. If you want just a nice, you know, base point to get it close enough and then you can fine tune it. But that's our exposure settings. Same thing for white balance here. So we can adjust the color temp, 12,000 Kelvins all the way down to 2,500. <laughs> I like the blue. What do you guys think about that? All right, and then we have a tint as well. So we can tint that up or down, minus 300 all the way up to 300. Let's go back to automatic there. And then lastly, we got processing here, anti-flicker 50 or 60 hertz. Just pick and choose which one works best for you. So that's a look at the camera features within Camera Hub. Let's go over to the effects because these are really, really neat. I'm blown away by what this is able to do. First up, let's look at our AI blur. Isn't that crazy right there? Look at that. So you might notice too our preview format changed right here. I'm not sure. Let's see. Can we go up to 4K60 previewing with that? It doesn't look like it's capping us at 1080p60. But look at that. The movement in motion here. Get a feel for it. I can see a little bit. But man, not bad. We get a little bit closer. Looking at the camera. That blur is sweet. So this is just fun, a lot of different effects. I like the Elgato one, another Elgato one. What do we got here? Just a cool background, we're at a little coffee shop, restaurant, I don't know, work, uh, shared coworker space. Home office vibes right there. I like this one too, this one's pretty nifty. I think that looks really good. All things considered, not bad at all. Just fun to see the backgrounds and the different effects. NVIDIA broadcast. I love it. I mean, that looks, I mean, got the hair here. I know there's, that one's kind of got a video with movement behind us. But I mean, with the mic and stuff too, at the foreground, I feel like that looks like we're in a little podcasting space, doesn't it? Does it not? I don't know. I'd love to have that legit set behind me here. Man, that looks good. Okay, here's another moving one. Got the little video with the trees and stuff behind us. Pretty nifty stuff. Those look really good. Oh, we're telling you the news now. Oh, I'm just, you know, at my office. It's just been a tough day at work, man. How sweet is that view? I'm at home. I mean, I'm digging that. So we have a little plus icon. Looks like maybe you can add your own. And with this blur strength down here at the bottom, doesn't look like we have the ability to adjust at least right now. Or maybe just this one. 
but everything else, that adjustment slider is not going to be useful. And then ARFX for eye contact. Not really sure what this one does or doesn't do. You guys can probably tell. Maybe I'm looking at the lens and I'm not, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to like force our eye contact. Let me turn that one off. When I'm looking at the preview, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything different. I don't know. I'm trying to look back and forward. I don't know if it's forcing my eyes to look at the camera. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe what I'm seeing is not what you guys are seeing. But that's going to be your AR effects for eye contact. I feel like something's different when I look around and back with it. But there's your AR effects for eye contact as well. And then I didn't talk about it, but at the top we have our orientation. You can mirror or flip. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, I'm having way too much fun with that. And we're back. Hey, that's normal. Last but not least, now we're recording 4K straight from OBS on this webcam so you can get a feel for the real world quality of the Facecam Pro. Having fantastic lighting will definitely make this camera look even better. It's super plug and play. You can use the Camera Hub software if you want to really fine tune this like you're operating a mirrorless camera. Now what's great about this camera is it costs like three times less than the camera it's replacing. So compared to your mirrorless DSLR cameras that you want to use for streaming or content creating. This one's going to save you a lot of money to build out the rest of your ecosystem. Maybe it's a mic, mic stand. Maybe it's the prompter. This pairs really nicely with the prompter. Even has a bracket built for it by default right out of the box. So it's truly plug and play. Maybe you want a Stream Deck or other Elgato products like that. That's what this camera is going to enable you to do. Get something that's good enough for streaming or filming online and allowing you to grow the rest of your brand. And now now, just as a bonus, I turned off the studio lights. We have two overhead lights and the two computer monitors right here. Just wanted to show you what it looks like in a limited lighting environment, but now let's go ahead and make it even darker. All right, now I went ahead, I turned off those overhead lights. We have the two monitors still, and then we have a door off to the side with the blinds down, but there is some diffuse light coming in right there. But what do you think about that? Take a look at the quality, even in like a low lighting environment, count me impressed. But wait, there's more. Now, I've talked a lot about this camera and I probably seem really lovey-dovey because I do. I truly like this camera and think it's fantastic. But there are some things I'd still want to see improved. The biggest one for me is you can hear when the camera is focusing. That could become a distraction to you if you leave it on autofocus. So maybe continuing to refine those motors to make things quieter. But maybe for some of you out there, you actually like that to know when it's focusing or not. Other than that, I'd love a longer USB cable included. Maybe like a nine foot cable would be great depending on people's setups, where your computer is. You would just appreciate having more length. Also along those lines, I didn't notice a type A to type C adapter. I think that would be nice too. Maybe not for everybody, but for me, I could have used an adapter like that. Most of my USB ports on my computer are already full. So it'd be nice to just have the flexibility to switch from a USB type C to a type A and still use the same cable that was included. But overall, count me impressed. It's a solid webcam, webcam, but really it's going to be a nice mid-tier replacement to your entry-level mirrorless cameras. And it's going to save you a couple hundred bucks in the process.